I think it's a really natural um, side effect of being brought up as a little girl in the culture that we were all brought up in. Um, that we were taught that it wasn't safe to stand our ground. Um, we were taught that we had to be good, we had to be nice in order to be loved. Um, we received messaging from the women that we saw around us that we had to take care of those around us. Um, and this stuff runs really deep. It's not the kind of thing that you can undo just by being conscious of it. It really has to be dug out at the root. And in my experience, that happens through going back over all the places in which we are still holding on to hurt around that experience and systematically, piece by piece, lifting it out. Um, and of course, there are other hurts that we get stuck in that don't relate to codependency. Um, things like constantly having difficulties with money um, it is rooted in a feeling of there being a scarcity around security. So anywhere where we didn't get enough of any resource that we needed, whether that was love and affection or a feeling of safety, or an abundance of the things that we desired um, can really leave its mark. And we, you know, it just sort of forms these belief structures on which we found our decision making and our. Um, what we feel we deserve. So um, a really powerful way of shifting those kind of patterns. And another way that this can show up is, for example, if you're someone who never feels at home, if you're constantly running from place to place trying to because the next thing always seems like it's gonna be better. And yet wherever you are, you can never really feel at home. Um, that, that can be rooted in that same kind of hurt. So, yeah. Um, we actually had someone recently who did deep work who had that same hurt of feeling like she was just never at ease wherever she was whatever she would settle into it always felt like the grass was greener somewhere else she could never be really at ease and um, it was amazing to watch her go through the process of fighting against this pattern to really become rooted and make decisions about jobs that she would take on or um, where to live. Um, and yeah, she made tremendous progress with that. And the interesting thing was that <laughs> that was what she set out to heal through doing this process. And, and she really did. But she also had um, all these kind of unexpected side effects. Um, like she suddenly started 
exercising for the first time in 15 years, having been really athletic all her life. Um, and she was just literally unable to make herself go for a run for 15 years and was giving herself a really hard time about that. And her body just started getting up and going for a run every morning. Um, she also noticed that she'd always used to be kind of seeking out thrilling experiences and adventure and suddenly she was becoming more and more content to just keep things really simple just go to the beach with her kid just be at home so um yeah it's interesting all the ways in which we don't even know how these patterns are affecting us. We don't even know anything different. Um, I wondered if you wanted to say anything, V. Thank you. Um, I feel like you've really articulated so much. Um, something that comes to mind for me that I that I've just witnessed in my own journey is having a, a sense through most of my adult life of this kind of background shame of not fulfilling my potential and knowing that I am an intelligent, capable, gifted human being and yet somehow I just wasn't quite getting it or if I did kind of reach some kind of success somewhere um it would you know I would sabotage that and break it down or throw it away and and what I noticed was when people like my friends and family that cared about me would reflect back you know you're so this and you could be doing that and and it would just fuel the shame even more because why am I not doing it what's wrong with me then there's another thing that's wrong with me you know and um I think I have a sense there's so many of us that can find ourselves in that kind of loop and and it's a kind of vicious cycle that that takes us down and um for myself kind of finding myself as if by magic coming out of that like it's like you do the work and then you kind of realize it's just it's happening the things that you were not doing, you're doing, at least this is my experience. So that was um, what was really coming through for me when you were speaking. Um, I feel like I could speak about this stuff for hours <laughs> and I'm also noticing the time and wondering whether it's probably a good time to dive in and experience it. But I think just to sum up, I'd say this work is so simple and it's deceptively simple and it's rooted in the absolute trust that each one of you has the wisdom in you and what we're doing here is holding a safe space for whatever's in the way of that wisdom to drop away so that that you can access that because often it might be our our program about pleasing or our self-doubt or um you know our different strategies that have been a good survival tool maybe as a child but now are just preventing you from aligning with your inner you know wise woman and it's so precious for us witnessing this process unfolding it um, like brings tears to my eyes just to kind of um seeing people being reborn and it's all it's all in you i think that's that's the most important thing to take away maybe from this call even if you don't join deep work to really trust that don't give up on that mm. thank you